Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. This episode is gonna be kind of different from what I usually make because I know you guys normally see me making like five different types of keto chocolate chip cookies or you're making like three types of keto fries, which is a video that's coming soon. So stay tuned for that one. But this is not gonna be one of those types of videos. It's gonna be more of a carnivore, what I eat in a week type of video. I've always wanted to do one of these like experiments ever since I started keto just because learning about keto taught me about how if you give things a chance, it has the ability to change your whole life. And I've heard so many things about carnivore and so I'm at the point in my life that I kind of just want to change up my diet and the reason why is because for those that don't know the past four months I've been doing this thing called the autoimmune protocol the autoimmune protocol is an elimination diet which is kind of like keto but you kind of take it a step further because you have to cut out all the inflammatory foods and inflammatory foods can include caffeine dairy sweeteners and eggs but the reason I was doing that was because I've been experiencing these flare-ups on my tongue and they're not painful they're just very bothersome I don't know the cause of it and I'm at that point where I'm kind of fed up because you know I followed the keto diet I lost a lot of weight which was great but I still have inflammation on my tongue and I can't get rid of it so I was hoping that the autoimmune protocol would fix it and it didn't I actually documented every week that I did the autoimmune protocol and I filmed them I just haven't edited them I was gonna post them on this channel but then I kind of got like scared because there were a lot of videos and they kind of led to nowhere so if you guys want to watch them I'll link them down below and and then you guys can just watch and follow my journey as I go from 185 to 156 because I did lose some weight on it because it was a, an elimination protocol. It basically cut out all the fun foods in my life and I was basically living off meats and veggies and fruit. Like I said, the reason why I started that elimination protocol was because I was experiencing inflammation on my tongue. Turns out it did nothing to fix the inflammation. I thought at the beginning I had a chance of it fixing it because it actually went away but then towards the middle of it, it just came back and it just didn't go away and I was like, well, what the hell? I told myself in the beginning of those videos that I was gonna actually go meet with a nutritionist slash functional wellness practitioner to get it resolved because you know diet can only do so much and at some point you actually have to get the professionals in there to help you and so that's what I did. As of right now I have already met with a functional wellness practitioner. I have been given supplements to help with the inflammation. If you want to know what my tongue looks like I would show it to you but I'm extremely embarrassed at how it looks like. It's, I think it's disgusting. If you google the term geography tongue you'll get a very very visual photo of how my tongue looks like so have fun with that anyways i basically met with a functional wellness practitioner we've came to the conclusion that i might have candida and that what i'm experiencing might be thrush but it could also be geography tongue or it could also be diet related I don't know. I'm at this point where I'm pretty fed up because like I just want to bake stuff and I just I just want to enjoy my life and enjoy food and I feel like almost half of this year has been dedicated to actually fixing this issue and no fixing has been done. Just a lot of trial and error basically. Anyways, uh, we think it could be candida and what candida is, it's a bacterial overgrowth that's in your gut and that everybody has candida. So like you probably have candida. The thing is candida is not really so much an issue until it's an overgrowth and right now that's what I have I probably have an overgrowth and it's spreading to all parts of my body and that's why I have it on my tongue I just know for sure that sugar and dairy feed candida and even though I've been doing this elimination protocol for the past four months I've still been overdoing it on fruits and fruits have natural sugars I think that's a big reason why I haven't experienced any relief from my symptoms I'm at this point where I'm just willing to give up everything veggies included in hopes of fixing this candida overgrowth. If I eliminate all sugars from my diet, I'll eventually starve off the candida. That's why I feel like going carnivore is the next step. Because like I said, even when I was doing the elimination protocol, it doesn't allow you to have sweeteners, but it does allow you to have sugars. And you can only get natural forms of sugar. So like honey was okay, fruits were okay, which is great. But because I've experienced 4th of July, I've experienced my birthday, I've experienced my sister's birthday, I've experienced these events and I couldn't have anything sweet and I couldn't have any breads and I couldn't have anything fun. I overdid it on fruits. I know, sorry, that's a very long explanation for everything. So for the next 30 days, I'm going to be following a carnivore diet. I watched a few videos already. I watched videos from health coach Kate. I watched ones from carnivore yogi, Caitlin Week. I've been watching a lot of their videos, a lot of like their resources as far as like what you should eat, what you should avoid, what should you be mindful of. So I definitely recommend them if you actually want to learn more about the carnivore diet. Like you can also read books, but I really look specifically to them because they're actually females who are actually following the carnivore diet. And you know, women are different. And so hearing their side 
side of it and their experiences, it makes me a little bit more comfortable knowing that and a woman is telling me what to expect. Anyways, I'll link their channels down below if, if you guys actually want to look into those videos. They're really helpful for me. I've like binge watched a lot of their videos. I'm not an expert. I'm not I'm not telling you guys what to do. I'm just sharing you guys my experience and my journey in hopes that maybe it helps you. Maybe you're interested in the carnivore diet. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So for my first meal on carnivore, I had four eggs and two Applegate chicken sausages that already come seasoned with some herb, which is not a big deal for me since I already messed up and cooked these in avocado oil. For lunch, I reheated some chicken breast I made the night before. It was super bland, super boring, and dry. And this is a mental note to myself to never buy chicken breast, even if it's on sale. Today I'm gonna be cooking carne asada because that's what I'm gonna have for dinner. And I'm gonna season it with salt because salt is all I can have. I did cheat a little bit because I did use garlic powder, which garlic powder is technically not carnivore. But you know what? I'll allow myself to have garlic powder, onion powder, you know, then slowly I'll start weaning myself off so that next week I'll just have salt. That will be my seasoning. Like, salt's all you get. Yeah, let's see how this goes. Using some Redmond salt. So I'm gonna just like, eh. I need a little bit of duck fat. I know they say not to sell the pan. But you know what? We crowded. For dinner, I had one whole steak that tasted so good and was a nice change from eating that dry ass chicken for lunch and eating just eggs in the morning. Mm. Part of me is like, this isn't grass fed. This isn't grass finished. It tastes good. Here's the thing with the grass fed, grass, the grass finish. I'm gonna do it as much as I can. See it? Like if I see ground beef that says grass fed, grass finished. I'm gonna do grass fed, grass finished because I am eating a lot of meat, so I should be worrying about the nutrient density of the meat, the how clean it is, and all the stuff that people say. But if I don't see the meat there or around me, or if I run out of meat and I'm like, I just need something to eat, like I'm gonna eat it. I'm just not trying to spend the hundred and fifty dollars on Butcher Box again. And I'm just kidding. Butcher Box is pretty good. I mean, my husband doesn't like Butcher Box because it, he says it tastes pretty gamey, which yeah. They're eating grass, they're grass fed. I don't mind it, I'm not too like, oh I can't eat it, it's not that great. I actually liked it, it's such a little bit of meat. Obviously you're getting, it's organic and it's like grass fed, grass finished, so it's higher quality meats and obviously it's worth the price tag, but that takes like a chunk out of your budget to, just for meats so that won't last you a whole month either. Well, we'll see how it goes. I'll post my results, I'll show you guys how much weight I lost, my measurements. I'm gonna try to be consistent with the vlogging. Never done these types of videos. And I really wanna get more into it just because it'll give you more of an insight into my personality. Not that I have one, but I do wanna sprinkle these videos in between me, like making those videos that like take me forever to edit, forever to film. And I also wanna focus on like my on-screen camera presence. Like I have zero. I don't know a lot of things. I just know I lost weight on keto. I'm gonna share with people the stuff that I did on keto, the recipes that I learned on keto, the fun ways to eat keto. Finish. I'm excited to see how much weight I lose in this video. I'm excited to see the confidence that I gain in this video. It is 5.48 and that's gonna be me finished eating for the rest of the day because it would require me to cook more and I'm not trying to cook at all for the rest of this day. And I really ate like a lot. I will see you guys tomorrow. So for day two, I pretty much ate the same thing from the day before, chicken sausage and eggs for breakfast and leftover dry chicken for lunch. I can't wait to be done with this chicken. I'll just be sticking to chicken thighs from now on. These are a couple of goods that I picked up from the store. These are the closest eggs that I can find that are good. Now this bacon has no sugar and all it's made with is pork, salt, and that celery powder thing. We're good. I got on this one, which is also another good one that I bought. These are the sausages I've been eating. They have spices, which I'm not sure if they have like those nightshade spices, but you know what? I'm not tripping out about it because it's probably like this much, not too much. These, I told myself I wasn't gonna eat processed meat. This is technically a processed meat, but you know what? Probably have them once just to try them out, just because I haven't had a hot dog in a while. And you know what? I want, I want to try this. I, I'm excited for this. This is also another product I got. I got it from Grocery Outlet. And so this is what I'm planning on using as a snack. Like if I wanna drink some water and then I'm like, you know what, I'm bored of water. I'll just mix this 
with hot liquid. It also has collagen. There you go, it has one simple ingredient. So it was on sale. Apparently this cost like $50. I got it for like 20 at grocery outlet. So I was like, score. This salt is like $8 and I got this like at a local bargain store and it was only $3.99. So I scored there. And I got these pork rinds, which are like the good pork rinds. Because they're made with like the good fats. They have very simple ingredients too. There's like no maltodextrin or anything. It has like black pepper, salt, salt, onion, and garlic powder. And then I bought this because I messed up yesterday. I couldn't have avocado oil and I made my eggs in avocado oil. So I'm like, this is my new avocado oil. This is one that I picked up at grocery outlet. It was like $1.99. Normally these cost like $8. So like for me to find these for like $2 or $3, you know, I'm I'm scoring in my little town of Hemet. I'm scoring. But day one wasn't so bad. I didn't get a headache. I fell asleep really, really early. So I didn't get tempted to eat more than I should have. And you know, I'm hoping it goes the same today. I should have mentioned that this is like the cleanest I can get at Walmart because that's where I do most of my shopping. But these were on sale for four dollars. I'm like, well, I want to get I get peckish sometimes, and what if I want a snack? So I'm gonna try to prep these so that I can have them for a snack. I just made chicken in the air fryer and i'm gonna eat that right now that's my second meal of the day my second schnock i'm gonna meal prep a lot of like chicken drumsticks like i had said i did put some garlic powder some organic garlic powder for flavor i just want to show you guys my nails my nails are pretty like weak i've been losing a lot of hair like i don't even know if you could see this and i'm really excited to start incorporating protein and meat back into my diet because i did get really relaxed the last three weeks so before I started carnivore, I had started drinking a lot of dairy-free protein shakes because of this workout program I started. And I ended up starting to skip real meals and replacing them with these shakes. And on top of that, I started also incorporating this like collagen fuel in my shake. And I was hoping it would help with like my hair loss and my nails because I don't know, for some reason, my nails were getting really brittle and I was losing a ton of hair. And honestly, I think that alongside with the fact that it's like really hot outside right now and and that I was just basically having one real meal a day, it contributed to my hair loss. Like I keep on pulling out hair and it's like just super frustrating. And I'm curious to see how one week of carnivore does in terms of like growing my nails, having them be longer and stronger. And then as far as my hair falling out, I have a lot of hair, you know, seeing the hair fall out is still pretty concerning. And I'm just like, ugh. I don't know what's going on. I mean, I do know, but I'm hoping that I know what I know, you know? All right, so the last meal I had was the chicken drumsticks, which I ended up hating because it came out bloody as hell. Now I'm in the kitchen and I'm making these Levain bakery style cookies for me to not eat, but to look at and photograph and have my husband test. And I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna watch. That's, that's what I'm doing to end day two of carnivore. This is day three of eating carnivore and for breakfast i had pretty much the same thing where i had three sausages three eggs and two slices of bacon and it was that applegate bacon that is like no sugar and it's pretty clean right now it is 4 59 i'm kind of hungry but i'm not that hungry and i know for sure i'm gonna have a steak tonight so i don't want to eat something too big so i did have some shrimp in my freezer and i just defrosted it and i cooked it up really quick and i don't know if you can see but yeah, that's what I'm having as a snack right now. And as far as how it's been so far, I have had no headache. I haven't had a crazy amount of energy. I'm like, I'm curious to see how my ketones are right now. I've noticed that I've, I've had decreased hunger. Like I'm not that hungry. But yeah, I will show you guys what we have for dinner. This is my day three carnivore dinner. Excited to eat. I've been waiting for this all day. So that's pretty much the end of day three of keto carnivore. I have more meat defrosting so that I can like meal prep it and then just have something to snack on if I want to snack on. I'm not counting calories. I'm not counting macros. I'm just eating meat intuitively just because that's how I want to do it. I don't, 
I've been watching so many videos on how other people have done it. I just want to approach this like as a person who may have done her research but is not like really think overthinking it and just doing what I have to do. I just have to eat meat for 30 days and we'll see how that goes. So I just got back from the gym and it is 11 and I just finished meal prepping and I finished making breakfast for myself. I'm going to be working from 2 to 8 today so I'm not planning on making food when I get home. I already have food meal prep for my husband but I'm trying to eat a good meal and then I'm going to have a good lunch. Probably going to eat only twice today and this is what I'm having. Breakfast which is some type of steak that I just purchased and then some eggs and then I hate chicken breast but I had a lot of chicken breast because it was cheap so I just got some of the leftover steak just so I don't get bored of just eating chicken and i just meal prepped it for three days three lunches so this could be lunch for work or it could just be just to have as a snack if i'm at home all day and you know i figured out a very interesting cooking hack for cooking chicken so it has flavor is i cook the steak first and then with the leftover juicy bits that are left from the steak from like, like crusting up at the bottom of the pan which you can't see it anymore because I kind of removed all that crustiness. I cooked the chicken on top of that. I added a little bit of chicken rendered fat and I cooked the chicken on top of that and now the chicken tastes like steak. So, heck. Okay, so I'm actually getting ready to go to work right now and I forgot to mention that in the morning I was like really, really, really dehydrated. So as soon as I woke up, I had like the biggest headache ever. But I've been drinking a lot of water. I drink like four of these a day. I know for a fact that I'm drinking a lot of water. I just think I might not be supplementing a lot with electrolytes. I do have Redmond Real Salt, so I'm gonna start adding it to my water because maybe I'm just not retaining the water and I'm just not feeling hydrated. I'm gonna add salt to my water and then I'm also gonna make a bone broth with this Vital Proteins bone broth mix that I had bought and hopefully that can hold me over till lunchtime. Redmond Real Salt, this is the one that I found on discount at my local bargain store. So this is what I'm gonna add to my water right now. And then this is what I'm going to make right now. I have like 15 minutes to drink it. Hopefully it holds me over and makes this headache go away. Yeah. Let me show you guys. So this is just about 8 ounces. Can you see all of it? It smells like coffee to me. It's so weird. Ugh. It doesn't taste like anything. It tastes like what coffee would taste like. So you know when you wash a cup of coffee and then like you don't really clean the cup completely so there's still like some coffee residue and then you fill it up with water and then you drink that? That's what it tastes like. I'm currently adding salt to the bone broth collagen because it literally tastes like nothing. Salt definitely helps. So I mean I'm gonna drink it because have to drink it but $49 I wouldn't buy that for $49 luckily I got it for $20 but oof I mean I guess if you're adding it to other savory meals and you're just like I want to add more collagen in this soup I can see why you would buy it for that but like $50 $50 is a lot so this is my meal prep lunch that I didn't finish because I was actually pretty full so this is what I had for dinner which was topo chico which is my new favorite drink and I had a little piece of chicken just so I could have dinner with my husband so to start off day five, I started by prepping the most blandest slab of carnitas ever in the slow cooker. All right, my breakfast was my usual egg and sausage combo. But for lunch, I actually had some leftover pot roast I made last week. It did have some veggies, but I just ate around it. Okay, so carnivore update. My digestion has been crap. Literally, bowel movements are almost non-existent. And if they are, they're not normal, which is to be expected. What I've seen a lot of people go through when they go through the first week of carnivore. So fun stuff. Two, I don't have a headache. I think I've been good. I only had it for that like one day. There is something interesting that's been happening. And I don't know if it's related to the fact that I've still been working out. I'm doing this booty king workout that i paid like 50 bucks for because i have no butt and i'm hoping to get a butt and i really like the workout i feel like i'm seeing some definition in my, in my butt finally it's at least helping me feel more active by going to the gym because i've been you know lifting not like lifting lifting but i've been doing some kind of like weight lifting but the right side of my lower back hurts a little bit and i'm not sure if it's my liver or if it's because i've been working out but it hurts and it doesn't hurt like that much it just hurts to the point where i'm like oh this doesn't feel good so for breakfast i tried to switch it up i had eggs and carnitas instead of my typical sausage i'm officially on day six of carnivore i'm not tired i actually went to the gym enjoyed going to the gym I feel like I have more energy 
I'm not as hungry as I used to be as well. Like right now I just made some keto pastries which haven't tried not one bit. I miss the act of baking and I wish I could actually enjoy what I'm actually baking. And that's what I miss the most. I haven't been really hungry. I haven't been limiting my food because if I'm hungry, I'm hungry. I have like drumsticks that are ready to be air fried. So I have food at the house. I have things to eat. I'm not bored of them already. I think the thing that ruins it for me is the fact that food gets stuck in my teeth and I hate getting food stuck in my teeth because it happens so often. And like I said, I don't know if it's because of the structure on my teeth or, or how I bite or how I chew. It's very uncomfortable and sometimes I'm like, Jesus Christ. I haven't been having trouble sleeping at night. I've actually had really good sleep. I've been having trouble like kind of falling asleep, but I just start reading a really like data heavy book. I've been reading The Sacred Cow and they just spew a lot of facts. It's a very interesting read, don't get me wrong. Like I'm really interested in learning a lot about all the facts, all the information they have in the book, but it can make me fall asleep really easily. So I've been using that to fall asleep. And then when I fall asleep, I sleep like a baby. I don't wake up in the night to pee. And then as far as my tongue, not healed at all. I don't even know if it's healing at this point but i haven't seen the symptoms get better or worse which is a good thing i know it's just the first week and i should give it some time and i am giving it some time but it's still like frustrating because like i just want to go back to my normal life so for breakfast i had carnitas and eggs again and for lunchtime i had myself a little snack of shrimp and in this video i'm going to be doing a voiceover real quick because i was cooking in the background and i didn't realize how loud it was going to be i'm just talking about how stiff my two fingers are i woke up with one pinky cramping and then throughout the day it started spreading to the rest of my fingers and that kind of freaked me out so i pretty much know it has to do a lot with electrolytes and so right then on the spot i just ordered some on Amazon and for dinner I just had some crispy chicken thighs with my topo chico and called it a week all right so that was my whole first week of keto carnivore it wasn't as hard as I was expecting it to I stuck to it pretty good I did have some mistakes like I did use at one point I used avocado oil instead of like using like my rendered chicken fat or some other type of animal based fat I've still been experiencing a lot of hair loss that is why I did pick up collagen peptides which i also got on sale for $14.99 i don't think i would ever get the capsules again just because just because i have to take six of these and when you get the powdered stuff you only have to take like a scoop for the day so i would rather take one scoop of something than like six capsules of something i lost dun 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 i lost in my first week of carnivore this amount of weight um, I don't know the weight yet just because I'm filming this the day before I'm about to weigh myself which you know weight loss I'm not gonna lie to you and say oh weight loss is the furthest thing from my mind I don't really care about weight loss obviously I care about weight loss but like I said my main thing is the inflammation in my tongue and as far as the inflammation in my tongue goes it is pretty much the same I do see it getting slightly better so I do have hopes it's only been the first week so I'm not too concerned that you know Oh, I haven't experienced anything in the first week. I know, I know I have to give it time. And one week is not enough time. So I am gonna do the full 30 days. I might do a month and a half if I have to. If I'm experiencing really great results, I only have three more weeks to go. And um, as far as any other symptoms, oh yeah, my bowel movements are a wreck. TMI, everything that they say that you'll experience on carnivore in regards to your bowel movements is correct. I had watched a lot of videos, so I already kind of knew what to expect, but my God, Jesus, this diet is really something. And I'm not surprised that it is just because, you know, when I did keto, you know, a lot of people experience a lot of constipation. It's only temporarily until your body adjusts. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this is the exact same thing when it comes to carnivore so i will keep you guys posted on that and thank you guys so much for watching feel free to subscribe if you want to and i will see you guys in the next video